Okay, welcome back to a new review. Today we're testing out the Multicycle R1. A very ordinary bike. I usually test fat tire bikes with massive motors and huge batteries, but this is a very almost street legal bike, which is one of the first on this channel. Now it's a 26 inch tire with an integrated battery, 14.5 amp hours, 36 volts. I think that's got to be one of the first 36 volt batteries we have on this channel. A 250 watt motor. It does, however, have a thumb throttle, a very small and yankee one, but it does have it. A Shimano 7 gear, a screen, a bell, some buttons, a front light, a rear rack. The bag is not included. I just added it because I needed it but it's a very ordinary bike. It has all the parts that you would expect. What was included, however, was the rear and front fender. I love to see that. That's not always the case, so that's great. I've done almost 500 kilometers on it. It came in a big box. We put it together, nothing out of the ordinary. It was all very normal. It is all very normal looking with the step through design, the integrated battery. It looks really good. I found some concerns while riding it, however, so I want to share with you guys right now. So let's go for a ride, okay? Let's do it. I'm just gonna do a transition here, okay? Now, to be fair, I've done little to no maintenance. The only thing that I noticed was that the bolt holding the handlebars together came loose after 400 kilometers. Now, all I had to do was bolt that down and it's now completely fine. However, the main thing is that the rigidity of the frame seems to not be great. Check this out. As I release the handlebars, I'll get this oscillation on the... Yeah, whoa. Yeah, these shakes. It doesn't reek of confidence. Now, I've seen that on other bikes as well. The X26 from Engway I had actually had the exact same problem. Now, this obviously gets worse the faster you're going. But that's not very comfortable. Now, the second thing is the gears. It's a Shimano 7 gear, but I'm always on number 7. I'm always in highest gear, no matter how slow I go, because it's actually quite fine. But as you speed up to level 5, which takes you up to 32 kilometers an hour, you are ghost pedaling like crazy. Oh shit, sorry. I cannot keep up. And even on level 3, which is 25 kilometers an hour, it's still... It's still too fast. You feel like you need at least two, maybe even three more gears. Now, the third and final issue is something a lot of e-bikes have an issue with, and that's throttle control. Where it's almost as if you have PID settings and it overshoots and starts to oscillate. Anyone who's been dealing with drones knows what I'm talking about. But basically, you are in assist mode and you're trying to just use your pedals normally. But as you increase in speed, the throttle, the input to the motor, shuts off because you have now reached the threshold of the speed. Let's say 20 kilometers an hour. But then as you slow down to 19 kilometers an hour, it kicks back in and it overshoots to 21 kilometers an hour. And this gets you a very, it's not uncomfortable, but it gets you a quite cheap and jerky feeling of the throttle. So here's what I'm saying. This is all very notable at higher speeds as well. If you're going slow, it's not very notable. So I'm going to speed up. But here we go. We're going 28 kilometers an hour. Listen to when the motor kicks in, kicks in okay? Not sure you could hear it. I've done this test on the DYU bike. It had the same issue. But that was also very notable because that bike was incredibly fast. This one is not as fast, so it's not as notable. But yes, the throttle keeps kicking in. The motor keeps kicking in. And it's very notable because it gives full power. I know Engway does this very well on their bikes. 
because they have this smooth curve so it doesn't provide 100% throttle right away it kind of eases you into it uh, but this bike is not like that it provides full throttle and that's also a thing the motor is not so powerful that it's annoying uh, the DYU bike had that issue it was a thousand watt motor so it, it very notably kicked you back all the time um, but yeah those were the three main concerns that I have with this bike and considering it is 1100 euros I feel like that might not be concerns that I should have with a 1100 euro bike if that makes sense brake tests pretty good acceleration test motor only acceleration test pedaling plus motor frame rigidity test I don't know what the fuck this test is but but I guess it showed something now just after those few brake tests the handlebars are now loose again and that screw is pulled as hard as I possibly can so so I'm just not a big fan of this design something they absolutely did do right on this bike though is having five pass modes which is the speed modes so speed one is pretty much 15 kilometers an hour number two is 20 number three is 25 number four and five is anywhere between 25 and 32 it's like 28 and 32 uh, it's good increments uh, some of the bikes i've complained about before have three pass modes and it's you know 20 kilometers an hour 30 and then 40 so it's very big jumps this one is perfect I, I i love this you have all the vital components the bell some buttons the shifter and here's the throttle yeah never seen that kind of throttle before but yeah there it is believe it or not but all the e-bikes don't have this connector so that you can disconnect the motor in case you have a flat tire and repair it always happy to see this connector this rubber seal constantly pops out so how is it to ride well Oh, yeah, I always forget about that. So how is it to ride? Well, it's actually quite comfortable. I totally could see this being used as a commuter to and from work. It's no issues and I've already done 500 kilometers on it. I know I mentioned some potential deal breakers for buyers, but that's, that's my experience with this bike. Although I think there are better options on the market, just like the V3, for example. It has, if I remember correctly, the exact same battery and it's a few hundred euros less i know it's not as clean this one is very clean i'll give them that but you get the same motor the same battery but yes you'll have the battery on the outside it doesn't look as good but you get a lot a lot of bike for your money on that bike and a lot of other bikes as well it just that one came to mind uh, but this one i think is on the heavier price point so well i think i'll stop there that's going to be my review of the molly cycle r1 all right thank you very much for watching i hope you liked it have an awesome day bye oh fuck.